Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Lamar, I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about placing an impeller device through the axillary artery. Before we get started though, let's review the anatomy of the heart and also define what an impeller is. This is a model of the heart here. I like to think of the heart in terms of sides. This is the right side, right atrium, right ventricle. And this is the left side, left atrium, left ventricle. Blood will classically go from the right atrium to the right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. When the blood gets to the left ventricle, the muscle will squeeze and push blood to this structure. This is referred to as the aorta. It's the largest blood vessel in the body. It will carry blood to our brain through these vessels. It goes behind the heart and supplies the other organs, the brain, the liver, the kidney, and even the extremities. When the left ventricle is not contracting well, not squeezing well, and pushing blood to the aorta, that can lead to inadequate perfusion or blood flow to the organs. If this happens long enough, that can lead to cardiogenic shock. And that's when the impella comes in. The impella is essentially just a heart pump. It will allow us to assist the heart function, and at the same time allow the heart to relax and recover. This is one model of the impella. This is referred to as the Impella 5.5. It has an inlet portion, which will suck blood into it, and that's placed within the left ventricular apex, and an outlet portion, which will push blood out of it, and that's classically placed in the ace and the aorta. And therefore, by pulling blood into it and pushing blood out into the correct position, it once again will assist the heart function. Just to be 100% clear, once again, this device is placed within the left ventricular apex, where it will suck blood into it, and the blood will then be pushed out into the outlet portion of the pump into the aorta and to the rest of the body. Now, as I mentioned, this is the Impella 5.5, but there's an older version referred to as the Impella 5.0. There's also an Impella LD, and that device is placed directly into the aorta, with the use of a graft, excuse me, directly into the aorta, into the left ventricle. There are other impellas. There's the Impella 2.5 and Impella CP. Those are commonly placed by cardiologists. And by the way, the difference in the impellas are largely based on how much cardiac output they can generate. Now, the impella can be placed within the heart in many ways. It can be placed through the axillary arteries, directly into the aorta, but also can be placed through the femoral arteries into the aorta. For the purpose of our discussion today, though, we're just going to focus on the impella being placed through the axillary arteries. Okay, so if a patient is going to get an impella placed through the axillary artery, first they get to the operating room, they'll eventually go to sleep, then the patient will be prepared for surgery, which essentially means being prepped and draped. They're sterilized and draped. Now, uh, there are two axillary arteries, this right and left, but more commonly the, aorta, the impella excuse me, is placed with the right axillary artery, and so we'll focus on that. This is a model of the human body here, and so what we'll do is when the patient's prepared for surgery, we'll take a scalpel, we'll make an incision approximately two finger breaths below the right, below the right clavicle. We'll get through the skin, we'll get down to the axillary artery, and then we'll take a graft, either an eight millimeter or 10 millimeter graft, and we'll sew it to the axillary artery. And the reason why is because we don't directly place the impeller device into the axillary artery. The artery is often small, and so what we'll do is we'll sew a graft to the axillary artery. Once the graft's in place, we'll take a wire, we'll go through the graft, through the axillary artery, into the ascending and the aorta, into the left ventricular apex. Now, to help guide us with the wire placement, we'll use fluoroscopy, which is essentially just x-ray, and we'll also use transesophageal echocardiogram, which essentially is an ultrasound. So with the combination of those two imaging modalities, we'll get our wire into the left ventricular apex. With the wire in place, we'll then take our device, impella, we'll place it on top of the wire, and we'll direct it into the left ventricular apex. Once we're happy with the position of the impella, we'll pull the wire out and we'll turn our device on. With the device on and, we're, and once we're happy, we'll secure the impella and then we'll close our incision layers. Now this entire procedure takes somewhere around 45 minutes to an hour, but it could be faster depending on how fast you get to the axillary artery, so you graft in and it also get your wire into the correct position. Now, we do this all the time, but there are risks involved. There's risk of infection, bleeding, there's a very small risk of injuring the heart as well. 
These devices will classically stay several, from several days to several weeks. The greatest advantage, however, of placing the impeller through the axillary artery is that we allow the patient mobility. They can mobilize, they can walk around the room and even the hallways. Okay, this is a brief description of placing an impeller device in, through the axillary artery. If there's any questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you very much.